this morning reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 22, speaking to the body of Christ. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. The parts that are unpresentable are treated with <coughs> special modesty. While our presentable parts need no special treatment, but God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lack it, so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, Every part rejoices with it. This is the word. Good morning. Good morning. Such a true song. This morning, if you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed, if you're feeling a little bit out of place, just know that you're loved by God. This is your first time here at Refuge. Let us welcome you. Just know there's no judgment here. We don't have time to judge each other. We all need some Jesus. Can I give you an We'll be reading out of 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. Let us not take for granted the moment that we have to hear the word of the Lord. Amen. Let that apply to our hearts. And may we leave today changed than when we came in. Amen. 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 1 Peter chapter 5, starting with verse 1. To the elders among you, I appeal as a fellow elder and as a witness of Christ's sufferings who also will share in the glory to be revealed. Be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care. Watching over them, not because you must, but because you are willing as God wants you to be. Not pursuing dishonest gain, but eager to serve, not lording it over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. In the same way, those of you who are younger, submit yourselves to your elders all of you clothe yourselves with humility towards one another. Because God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxieties upon him because he cares for you. Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Resist him. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that the family of believers throughout the entire world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. And the God of grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong and make you firm and make you steadfast. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. Amen. This scripture is a beautiful scripture that gives us a lot of instruction that we cannot ignore. This scripture is telling us basically how we need to be as a church, what a church should really, really look like. Now, I don't know if you're aware of this, but if you look around, we kind of look different. Amen. Can I get an amen? amen. And, and it's not because we're trying to be that way. We just are different. We come from so many different parts of this city of backgrounds but know this when we all come into a place of God 
We're all on the same level. Can I get an amen in that? I don't care if you have been a Christian for over 60 years. You are not more important than the person who's coming in looking for Jesus. And vice versa. However, there is a responsibility for all of us. The days of coming to church just to sit and hear and leave it at that are over. Amen. Especially when it comes to this church. Amen. Because I'm telling you, God put this church together for a reason. I wish I could tell you it came out of this brain. <laughs> I had an idea. I had an idea 15 years ago. And I said, God, this is going to be awesome. And God went, yeah, okay, whatever. <laughs> and instead of doing my idea, he did his. Amen. And here you are. Thank God. Now, some of you in this room are going, that's actually not to us because this is our first time here. Oh, no. If you eat our donuts and you drink our coffee, <laughs> you are one of us. Can I get an amen? <laughs> Today, I want to tell you a boat story. <clears throat> and I want you to put yourself in this story. Let me give you the setting. The setting is the ocean. And you are in a boat. <clears throat> and in this boat, you're safe from the shark that is outside the water. But there are thousands of upon thousands of people in the water outside your boat. What are you going to do? You want to help them. You should, right? You should sit there and go, hurry, swim to the boat. There's a shark out there. Let me get you in. But unfortunately, our culture, we sit back and go, you shouldn't be in the water. <laughs> Watch out. I'm glad I'm not in the water. Look at those in the water. Y'all should be in a boat. And I have a feeling the people in the water are like, we would like to be in a boat. <laughs> Could you help us out? And here's what happens is, as people of God, this is what this is talking about. It's talking about elders. If you are an elder now, now hear me on this. I know there's many different ideas of what an elder is in the church. We're going to make it real simple. Because I believe a lot of churches make it something it is not. If you're an elder quote in a church, that does not make you special. You shouldn't be the one that's paraded. You should be the one that is serving. And if somebody looks at you in any way and says... I need encouragement from you. I want some instruction from you. You're an elder. And you have a responsibility to love those who don't know Christ as well as you, that they may know Christ as well as you. The worst thing in the world that I've experienced is pompous Christians who sit there and walk around with their chest up and head high. Acting as if they are more spiritual than others. You may have more experience with God, but if you truly walk with God, your heart is for the hurting. Your heart is for the people that are in that water. And here's what happens. Some elders don't want to pull people into their boat. We're just glad we're not in the boat. We are content by just watching the world fly by. And that is not the heart of Jesus Christ. Imagine if that was his attitude and his heart on the cross. You and I would be doomed to hell. But the truth is, he gave himself so that we can love on one another and help each other out. Now before we go any further, listen to me. I am not talking about monetary things. Can I get an amen? amen? I need to establish that. Because there's a lot of people that say, ooh, I can use some help. How much money you got? 
I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the hell that lasts forever. You spend money. Can I get an amen on that? Man, if you, some of us, we, we need a budget. The rock stars and monsters are killing us. Oh, here, let me step on your toes. That's Starbucks coffee. <laughs> okay. We need to help others. Now, if someone comes to you and says, hey, I need your help. I need your guidance. I need your, your words of wisdom. Give it for God, not for yourself. We're supposed to pull others in the boat. And we're supposed to put them, pull them in the boat for the name of Christ. Not to show recognition to ourselves. Amen. That is extremely important. Remember, God opposes the proud. And pride cometh before a what? A fall. A fall. That anything that's good that happens in our lives is because God is at work. So how can we grab somebody and say, here, follow me. I will show you the way. No, you won't. Well, you'll show them a way. You'll show them the wrong way. But what we should do as elders, people who are helping others, is say, here, let me walk with you, and we will both go towards the way. We will go to the one who can change lives. Amen? Amen. Elders should do this for them and him and not for you. In my life of ministry, there has been times when I have thought of myself more than I ought to have. I thought God was going to use me in a mighty way. And I had great plans, God. And I put them to together on a piece of paper because I read scripture that if you put it on paper and you offer it to God, then it will come forth. And I said, Lord, I will in your name reach millions of people as Peacemaker, the white Christian rapper. <laughs> You may be able to find that CD at Ralph Records and Tapes. <laughs> it didn't do very well. It did great in Sea Grace. Anyway, let's move on. But I had these ideas. I said, God, I want to do this for you. And God said, no, I'm going to do what I do. I just want you to be a part of it. Help those who are hurting. Show them a new way by how you live. Not by just what you say. In fact, I don't want to declare myself a disciple. I would hope that somebody else would declare that for me based off what they've seen in me. Amen. It's a lot better that way than me going, I'm a disciple of God. Prove it. It's not by how much scripture you know. It's not all that. It's about how well you can love God others. The world will know you're my disciples by how well you love one another. Amen. Which is very important. Verse 4 says this. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. Here's my point in this. What should we be doing when Christ returns if we are called a church? Should we just be standing waiting for him and looking in the clouds for him to come? Should we be in our boat as others are drowning and getting eaten going, Lord, we're ready. For when God shows up, I hope he finds every one of us from the refuge about his business. Grabbing people and pulling them in the boat. Amen. You see, I grew up thinking this. Lord, come back. I'm tired of this world. I'm tired of taxes. I'm tired of responsibility. Lord, hurry, come back and take me away to heaven. That is not the attitude of Jesus Christ. The attitude of Jesus Christ is this. Hold on. There's more I can help. Hold on. There's more I can love on. Hold on. There's more that will be changed that will know you before you come back. Because know this. When Jesus comes back, it's over. It's 
done. There's no 11th hour moment at that time. So, Lord, not today. I want to be about your business. I want to grab people and pull them in the boat. If you're an elder, and here's what I mean by that. If you've walked with Jesus, if you know some things, then share that with others that don't know. Case in point, if I have to go to war, I'm going to find the old man that has survived many wars. He's going to be my elder. I'm going to listen to him because he has experience and he has the scars. I'm not going to listen to the guy that has read all the books on war, knows how to talk about war, knows how to state the art of war. No, give me the guy with scars and experience. If you have scars and experience, share them with those who are hurting. There's nothing more powerful than when a person is hurting and someone who is healed goes up to them and says, I used to be where you are. Amen. See, I got the same scars. Amen. I want to show you a better way. Let's walk together. But in our culture, we are taught to hide your scars. Act like it's not there. Ignore your past. Oh, man. I can't ignore my past. <laughs> Some of us in this room have really tried to ignore the past, but that paperwork always shows up, doesn't it? Yeah. But to be able to share that with somebody, be able to say, no, I'm not perfect. I'm just as messed up as you. However, I'm no longer the same. I'm going to show you a new way because I'm going to take you to the one who changes lives. I'm going to pull you in the boat. One person can't pull all others in the boat. Amen. But that one who has been pulled in would turn and start pulling others in also. Think about that. Here you are on your boat. You grab somebody. You pull them in your boat. And they get in your boat. And they go, oh, thank you so much. And they sit down. <laughs> Do you have a juice box on parts? <laughs> Good luck helping get everybody else in your boat. I'm rooting for you. But that's what we do in our culture. We go, oh, thanks for helping me out. Good luck helping everybody else out. When if that person who got pulled in the boat would turn around to that other person and say, all right, you get that hat, I'm going to get this hat. And they go in, they start pulling people in the boat, and those people that get in the boat go, oh, thank God, thank you so much. I tell you what, we'll get the backside. Next thing you know, everybody gets pulled in the boat, gets better, turns around, starts pulling other people in the boat. You know what? Then we realize something. We can save them all. Amen. Think about that. And here, listen to this. That shark, the devil himself that's in that water looking who he may devour, you get enough of us in the boat, we no longer become the prey, we become the hunter. Amen. That's what we need to be. But if you're an elder, you got to be willing to share yourself, your time, your love to those who are hurting. <coughs> now notice this, to the youngers, the ones that are hurting. Now hear me on this. Let me go into this. Because right now you're going, I don't know if I'm an elder or I'm a younger. You're both. And I tell you what, none of us can say, I'm a complete elder. I need no help. <laughs> no, I have some guys that have a lot more experience than me that I call on a regular basis because I am their younger. I need your guidance. I need your wisdom. I need your battle scars. So, yes, I'm younger to some. I'm an elder to others. But in all of that, it is about Jesus. Amen. But I have a part to play. Now, let's talk about youngers. Youngers are pretty difficult because we don't realize that we need to swim to the boat. It says this, in the same way, you who are younger, submit yourselves to your elders. All of you clothe yourselves with humility towards one another because God opposes the proud but shows favor to the humble. Listen to this. 
Humble yourselves therefore under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Here's what a younger does. He's in the water, floating. Come to the boat! The younger goes, I'm good. My life's cool, I'm fine, I don't need to get in the boat. You know what happens when you're in the waves a long time? You get tired and you drown. So listen to me. Many of us in this room have lied to ourselves and said, I'm good. I can control it. I got this. Only to realize you ain't got this. You need to put your pride down and come to the boat. Not to mention, youngers, there's a shark in the water. You may be enjoying the waves of life right now, but there's a shark seeking whom he may devour. Get in the boat. And that's what we do as elders. Come in the boat. Some of you, listen to me. You see a person you love in the water. And you're saying, come to the boat. And they say, I don't need the boat. And you're saying, please come to the boat. You don't understand. And you see the fin come up. Then you start getting real. Get in the boat right now. <laughs> Hear me on this. You cannot go back in the water and save anybody. Amen. Please understand that. As much as as you want to. They must come to the boat. You may not be able to go in and help them, but we can always be a help to them, encouraging them to come to the boat. Now here's the deal. Some that are younger will say, okay, there is a shark. I need to come to the boat. And they swim to the boat. And we say, amen. And they get to the side of the boat and they just stay right there. Thanks, I'm good. No, get in the boat. I'm good right here. I like the boat. It's going to keep me from drowning, but I'm not going all the way in because then I'll become the Jesus freak. Right? Listen to me. This, ladies and gentlemen, is a lot of our Christian culture today. That the people who hang on the side of the boat... When asked to praise God, will put their head in the boat and go, praise God. But then the friends in the water will say, hey, did you get in that boat? No, I'm still cool. We're going out this weekend, right? And then we call ourselves Christians. Your feet are still in the water. There's still a shark. In fact, God cannot stand it when we just hang on the side of the boat. He wants us all in or all out. He says, lukewarm, I cannot stand. If you were lukewarm, I will spew you out of my mouth. We cannot lie to ourselves and say, I'm good enough. No, we need to go all in. All in. And those that are hanging on the boat, you're keeping others from getting in. Hear me on that. Man, if you're hanging on the boat and you haven't gone all in, don't be an elder. If somebody comes to you and says, man, I need your help, say, I'm hanging on the side of the boat, man. Be praying for me. Because here's what's happening. People on the boat are going, I got you ready to come in. Nope, I want to stay in the water. Then get out of the way so I can help that one that wants to get in. You hear me on this? You cannot be the one on the side of the boat going, no, 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 always pay attention to me. Hey, move over if you're not wanting to get in the boat so I can help somebody. Amen. But what about me? I'm ready to get you in the boat. You're not ready to get out of the water. Amen. And I believe God is telling you to make a choice. Amen. Now, follow me here. So many people think, once I get in the boat completely, life gets easy. <laughs> in our experience here at the refuge many of us have found that once we have given our life completely over to God life kind of gets crazy 
I, I begin to suffer a little bit. Listen. Suffering is a good thing, not a bad thing. Of course we're going to have to suffer because we're being changed. You never know how good a saltine cracker is until you're starving. <laughs> Go without food for two or three days. See if you don't get that saltine. Be like, oh my goodness, this is gourmet. Ooh, you'll be licking the salt, <laughs> chomping on it. you eat a whole sleeve. You're like, that is the best cracker I've ever had in my life. That's right, because you've been without we take life for granted so much. Some parents, you may attest to this saying, and if you do, uh, you spend $500 getting groceries for your house. You put them in the pantry, there's food everywhere in your house. And then your punk kids come in. Amen. Open the door. I'm Starving and there's nothing to eat in this house. <laughs> what? I just went to the grocery store. I know that I'm starving. Can we go to McDonald's? <laughs> I've got some chicken nuggets in the freezer. I don't want those. I want McDonald's. And then what do we say as parents? Then you're not really hungry. <laughs> and my, my kids do this. They're just like, oh God, I'm so hungry right now. I'm like, oh, you don't even know hungry. <laughs> but I am willing to teach you. <laughs> it's because, man, our culture, we take for granted the, the gift of God. If you don't believe me, go to the hospital and visit the sick. <laughs> Those who are hurting on a daily basis and still praise God, seek to change perspective of your life. Your life really ain't that bad. Did you know that? Amen. It's really not that bad. Your perspective is horrible. That's right. But your life is good. So maybe we need to change our perspective and quit trying to change what we think we need in our life. Get in the boat. Amen. You got to get off the edge of the boat. Verse 10 says this. And the God of grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, it's a part of it, after you suffered a little while, will himself restore you. Restore the things you thought were lost. He will restore you. Make you strong, firm, and steadfast. Do you know why God makes those of us who are younger as we begin to change our life? We get in the boat, we suffer a little bit, then we become strong, steadfast, and restored. The reason why God does this is so we can get busy grabbing more people out of the water and putting them in the boat. Amen. That's who we are. Listen to this. The strongest church is where people minister to each other. To truly minister to each other. To go to another with a genuine heart and say, I care about you. Are you doing okay? No, nah, man, I'm struggling. Hey, can I take you to get some coffee? Man, just tell me about it. I may not have the answers, but I know the answer. Man, and I will walk with you. I will pray with you. I will be about my father's business with you. And let him change his life. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, hear me. Hear me, hear me, hear me. We do that here. We make this to be a place where we love on one another on a daily basis. We will become something so dangerous. Oh, you thought you were different before? You thought you were different because society said you're different? God says, hey, follow me. I'll make you real different. Amen. I'll make to where the world doesn't even recognize you anymore. Are, am I going to be popular, God? Probably not. <laughs> am I going to be well liked by everybody? No. no. But you will change the world. Amen. Ooh, that's us, ladies and gentlemen. That is us. 
Not so we can show our glory. Not so we can hold up the banner of refuge. No, so that we can show the world there is a living God today that changes lives. How do you know? Look at me. I am not the same person I used to be, and I will not be the same person tomorrow. Amen. But youngers, you got to get in the boat. Elders, you got to help them get in the boat. Here's the thing that breaks my heart. Born and raised in this city, and I love this city. Know that from the bottom of my heart, I love this city. But I am not happy with our Christian culture in this city. And I'm not talking about any churches or anything. Those churches are their boats. You do your boat. May God do everything he desires. I'm concerned with this boat. Amen. May it never be that we come a people that say, you can get in our boat if you're like us. Because some boats shoot people away. You don't look like us. You don't agree with us. Not us. We should be that boat that is not very pretty. Listen, I don't believe the boat of refuge will ever be a yacht. <laughs> I believe our boat, we're always having to put patches on it. You know? We got our welders working all the time. Uh, we got people trying to get the rust off of it. But man, she floats. Y'all gonna go out in the deep water? Amen. We got some people to get. Amen. And here you go. Here come some people. They're coming to the boat. Can I get in the boat? I, I don't believe in God. Absolutely. Come on in the boat. Can, can I get in the boat? I, 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 I'm fighting with alcohol. Get in the boat. I hate my parents. Get in the boat. I hate myself. Get in the boat. I have not quite identified myself sexually. Get in the boat. <laughs> I am not concerned with the condition of a person outside of the boat as, as I am excited about the condition they will become once they get in the boat. Here's why. I forgot to tell you about the skipper of the boat. We call him the king of kings, the Lord of lords. He is able to heal by touch. He is able to shake the earth by the words of his mouth. So no, I don't care where you're from and what you think and if you like me or not, get in the boat. And I promise you, you'll meet the skipper and he will change your life. Absolutely. is are we going to pull people in our boat it's a daily thing because here's the thing on the side of that boat has been put the letters that God himself put on there with the letters R-E-F-U-G-E -E. we should be the boat that goes out and people in the water say, there's refuge. Amen. Swim to that boat. They will love you. They will pull you in. But I used to be locked up. They really like you then. <laughs> My prayer is this. I'm going to ask Pastor Allen to come up. My prayer is this. That whoever God desires to be here will come Amen. and as they come into our lives not just this building not about this building but as they come into our lives that you and I will be refuge as we love them as God changes their life Amen? Amen that is who we are let's stand together Join hands. As we look at the book of Ezekiel, I want to remind you that we are that valley of dry bones. Amen. Son of man, can these bones live? Father, Lord, you alone know. Prophesy to these bones. Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. 
and I will make breath enter you, and you will come to life. Then we will know that you are the Lord. Let's pray. Father God, we love you. Master, we thank you that you found us. God, that you sought us. Master, that you gave us a place of refuge, even before refuge. God, that you continue to seek the lost, the last and the least. You continue to seek, God, those who have no hope and have no place. Master, those who are abandoned. Master, we ask that you would continue to, to use this, your church. God, that we would be effective that we would be moldable in your hand. God, that you may accomplish all that you have in mind in us. And that in that, God, you will be glorified and your kingdom will be increased. And Master, we will celebrate with the angels. Yes, Lord, that you have accomplished your will. Lord, bless this, your people. Guide them and guard them. Keep them each and every day. Master, set a light before their path. Call low that they touch to to prosper for your name's sake. Master, make us the body of Christ. We come to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you all.